Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. We're looking for skilled pilots to join us on new episodes. We've revamped our Patreon and this week we bring you a second match with our patron Philippos. Would you like to join us for the next game? Check out our Patreon below or ask in our Discord how to shuffle up with the Split Second team. This time Joss is going first and he brought his frog, Gitrog Monster. Philippus is still playing Prosperity's TV list, Elder is on his take on the tracks of Food Chain list, and Bali is piloting Tremnex Blue Farm list. Josh mulligan down to 6, finding a hand with fast mana to hopefully bring Gitrog fast and start dredging cards from there, having already Golgari Grave Troll in hand. Undergrowth Stadium, Lenor Wastes, Overgrown Tomb and City of Traitors for Lands. Lotus Petal helps on a turn 3 Gitrog at least. He sent a Brep Decay to the bottom, to make sure he wouldn't not find lands to keep replacing the sacrificed ones by Gitrog, in case he would brick. Philippos also mulliganed down to 6, keeping a polluted delta and hallowed fountain for lands, with a mox opal as a single rock, having sent Felor Stone to the bottom, but his vampiric tutor will help him find mana crypt to deploy that smothering tithe on turn 2, and the opal will soon be online. Path to Exile is a decent removal. Elder mulliganed once and found food chain already, not much else with it, but he's glad enough with it and Sol Ring for ramp, wooded foothills, tundra, marshlets and Gaius cradle for lands, and he also found Soin Af, which is mostly a combo piece and not as much removal, unless you forget Etal is indestructible. Lastly, Ball Mulligan once and found a Tarnished Citadel, City of Brass and an Underground Sea for lands. Jewel Lotus means a turn 1 Timna to turn Deflecting Swat online, or turn 2 Chrome, also turning Swat online, but less controlled card draw. Rhystic Study for card advantage and Windfall in case he desperately needs to refill his hand. Now, before the game starts, we have an announcement to do. October 25 to 27, we will be coming to Magic Con Las Vegas. That's right! If you're around, come meet us and play some games with us. Find your early bird tickets through the link in the description below. Now, ready for the match? Josh starts things with an undergrowth stadium into Lotus Petal and passes. Philippus follows a similar fashion with Polluted Delta into Mox Opal and also passes. Elder keeps a trend with a Tundra into a Sol Ring and also casts a Gromox, imprinting his Sawing off. Ball gets to his turn, plays an underground sea and a rock as well, Jewel Lotus. He cracks his right away to cast his commander, Timna, and passes a turn. Josh draws, plays an overgrown tomb and passes. In the end step though, Philippus grabs his polluted delta to find an underground sea, and then casts a vampiric tutor, hoping that last shock from Josh is not representing an opposition agent. He saves the search for a mana crypt and proceeds to his turn. He untaps, draws the crypt, plays an untapped hollow fountain and casts said mana crypt. It resolves, so he slam dunks smothering tithe, which no one has a response to, so we are back to Elder. He draws and does pay for the smothering tithe. He plays a marsh flats and passes. Ball draws and cannot pay for the tithe, so Philippus gets his first treasure. Ball plays a City of Brass and then attacks Philippus with Timna, triggering it at the second main phase and paying one life to draw a card, which in turn triggers a tithe and Philippus creates another treasure. Ball then casts an Arcane Signet and passes. In the end step though, Josh casts a freshly drawn Tainted Pact. He reveals a Noose Conscriptor and just stops right there, as it was all he was needing for right now. Josh then proceeds to his turn, he draws and casts the Noose Conscriptor right away. He plays a Lenoir Wastes and passes the turn, slowly and sneakily preparing to go off. Meanwhile, Philippus untaps and takes no damage from the Crypt. He draws and casts his commander, Tivit, Seller of Secrets. With three cards in hand, he votes Clue and Treasure, and each other opponent votes Treasure as well, since mana is not quite what he is needing for right now, and instead it is card advantage. He then goes ahead, casting a Path to Exile on Bal's Timna, hoping to deprive him of any commander-related free-to-cast spells. However, Bal doesn't have a Fierce, but he has a Flecking Swat instead, which he casts on the Path to Exile. Having mentioned the path would be aiming at Tivit instead, Philippus feels forced to have cast a Mindbreak Trap on the Swat. No one can protect that and Bal's list isn't even running basics, so this turned out to be better than Source of Plowshares, huh? This did slow up Philippus' attempt at winning on the spot, so he passes. In the end step though, Elder cracks his Marsh Flats and searches for a Bayou. He then gets to his turn, draws, triggering the tithe and paying for it. He plays a Wooded Foothills and passes. Bal taps, draws, not paying for the tithe. He plays a Tundra and casts his Rhystic Study, ending his turn. In the end step still, Josh uses Noose Conscriptor to discard his Golgari Grave Troll, joking as he's going to bypass Smothering Tithe for the rest of the game. Josh untaps and instead of drawing a card, he dredges 6 cards, returning Grave Troll to his hand. He then plays a City of Traitors and casts his commander, the Gitrog Monster. Rhystic triggers and he pays for it, cracking the petal. He then discards Golgari Grave Troll to Noose Conscriptor again, and plays his second land for the turn, a Gaia's Cradle. This triggers City of Traitors to be sacrificed, which in turn triggers Gitrog to draw a card, which he replaces with Dredge 6 from the Grave Troll, returning it to his hand. He mills 6 cards, hitting 2 lands, which triggers Gitrog to draw another card, to which he responds by activating Noose Conscriptor, discarding a Grave Troll, and then allowing the trigger to resolve, but instead of drawing, he dredges 6 again. 
He then repeats this process one more time, and now Elder Cracks is fetched to find a tropical island, and responds to the draw trigger by casting an Endurance. This triggers Ristic Study and it does not pay. Val draws and Philippus creates a treasure. However, in response to the Endurance trigger, Josh discards a force from his hand with Nus Constrictor's ability, triggering Gitrock to draw a card, which he replaces by dredging Golgari Great Troll again back to his hand, milling 6 cards. He finds another land, so he discards Grave Troll again in response to the Gitrock Monster draw trigger and dredges 6 once again. Gitrock triggers to draw once more and Philippus cracks his clue to draw, a bit in desperation as he knows there won't be any outs to this. Josh then dredges 6, and well, apparently there were outs, as he mills no single land card, and Daniel Drazi Titan is milled, triggering to shuffle his graveyard back to his deck. Endurance trigger now resolves and we're back to the draw trigger on the stack, to which Josh discards Golgari Grave Troll and continues the loop. He goes on to discard Golgari Grave Troll another 7 times, and once again he breaks, not only finding an Eldrazi Titan, but finding no lands in the 6 milled cards, which forces him to pass. While well, Nusko's Scriptor is a huge snake at this moment, no player kept track of it, previous to the first Eldrazi Shuffle trigger, since pretty much everyone was expecting the game to end now. Philip is in taps and takes no damage from the crypt. He plays a Windswept Teeth and cracks it for a Tundra. He then attacks Josh with Divot. While Nusko Scriptor has reach, Josh is not ever going to block with it, since in his upkeep he will be able to restart the loop once he sacrifices a land to the Git Rock. Voting begins, Philippus votes for a clue and treasure. Elder and Bal vote for a clue, as they are concerned about Josh, and Josh votes treasure. What no one was expecting, though, was an Imperial Seal on Philippus' second main phase. Ristic triggers, but he pays. He searches four Time Sieve to the top, and then he cracks a clue to draw a card. He proceeds to cast said Time Sieve, tricking Ristic and paying for it. So far, there was no interaction for Josh, so this might just be his one window. Sieve does resolve, and Philippus activates it to gain an extra turn, by cracking the rest of his treasures. He proceeds to his extra turn. He attacks Bal and they all fast forward voting, since Philippus is just going to use all the artifacts to gain another extra turn. Philippus now needs to find removal for the two other creatures with Breach, before he kills Bal, so he can keep generating 5 treasures per turn. Two more attacks towards Bal and two more extra turns, so Bal is now at 18 commander damage. Philippus now channels Otawara on Nus Conscriptor, to which Josh discards Golgari Great Troll in response. Philippus now attacks Josh, creating 5 more artifacts and sacrifices them to time Sieve to get an extra turn. He now plays a Vault of Champions and casts an Esper Sentinel, triggering Ristic and paying for it. He attacks Josh for 6 again, so he's now at 18 commanded damage as well. 5 more votes, 5 more artifacts sacrifice to time Sieve for an extra turn. This time he attacks Ball for lethal, and therefore only 3 players vote, creating a total of 4 artifacts. So now Philippus sacrifices them as well as Esper Sentinel to get an extra turn. This time, he swings at Josh for a lethal as well, and he votes for two treasures. It seems these will stop there, so Elder also votes for treasure as well. However, the mana was indeed what Philippus was in need of, and not the clues. In his second main phase, he transmutes Muddle the Mixture for Thassa's Oracle. He proceeds to cast said Murfolk, entering play and triggering, and in response he casts the Money Consultation, naming Coalition Victory, GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone, if you would like to play with us like Philippus, check out our Patreon below. Speaking of which, we'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Aajimu, Dragon Housecat, Pina, Ricardo, Katerina, Zinan, Turtle Godo and Chris, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment below, it greatly helps the channel. You can also take a look at one of these videos here.